Thank you everyone for joining us today. We are so excited to be here. And today we're gonna to talk about the hygiene department and how it is the powerhouse of the dental practice. My name is Jacqueline Hurley and I am the director of Dental Zine, which is the educational platform for both eAssist Dental Solutions and Practice Booster. And it's my pleasure to welcome Debbie seidel Bitke, who is the CEO and founder of Dental Practice Solutions. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. You know, I've known Debbie for a very long time. I can't even remember when we met Debbie. Was it SCN or EMC? I was trying to remember. We've known each other for so long. I know. It was at least 10 years ago, maybe ADMC. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, ADMC, which is the Academy of Dental Management Consultants, where consultants, the meeting of the consultant minds come together, and it's it's just such an incredible meeting and organization, so I'm sure that's probably where it is. So Debbie is all about hygiene. She is a registered dental hygienist, and Debbie, I remember you telling me many times that hygiene truly is the lifeblood of every general practice. I'm sure you still believe that today. Absolutely. And I think many times the hygienist is thought of, they say autonomous, but it doesn't mean they're on an island alone. We all work together in perfect harmony. And that's what makes a successful dental practice is when everybody's working together in harmony. I love that. That's awesome. You know, there are a lot of hygienists out there who are helping their patients with their oral care. Um, but, and I know that you're very passionate about hygiene, but you took it one step further and you decided to jump into being a hygiene consultant. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I was the president for the Orange County Hygienist, making a lot of money for my dental society and bringing in speakers. And at that point in time, I was also a, an assistant clinical professor at the University of Southern California. And my husband, one of my biggest cheerleaders, he said, Debbie, you know, I think you can do this. You can get paid to share your knowledge. So I did. I went immediately. I went to SCN and learned from Linda Miles. And she challenged us to put three courses together. I put three courses together. I hired an administrative assistant. She put my information out onto I don't even think we really had the internet like we do now. It was in the year 2000. And she started telling everybody exactly what Linda Miles told us to say in an email. And we would actually mail, snail mail all over the United States and Canada to uh, my courses. And the first course I ever gave was in Smithers, Canada. Holy cow. That's amazing. That's <laughs> by the Arctic Circle. <laughs> that's that's was it cold? Was it winter? It was freezing cold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was the best experience and they were so nice to me. And I look back on that in the year 2000. Oh my gosh, I didn't know anything, you know, and these people sat there and they, they listened and they were all dentists. It was an amazing experience and they gave me positive reinforcement and here I am in 2023 still doing that and I've gotten the opportunity to travel all over the world since then. That's wonderful and I'm sure you've learned even more than you, you said you didn't know anything. I'm sure you have learned so much more just going through the process of being a consultant because you're you're digging in to these practices and really trying to help them solve problems. Absolutely. And you know, it's so interesting how life evolves because I tell you the story of how I, my husband said, why don't you go out there and you can do this? And I really didn't have my why, you know, why am I doing this other than to share my knowledge? But in 2002, when I really was deep in the speaking, you know, I, I came up with my why and uh, that's, it just keeps evolving from there. I love that. That is such a great story. So let's say I'm a provider and I have my hygiene department is really struggling. There's a lot of hygiene consultants out there. So what makes you stand out? Why would I choose you to come coach me and my hygiene team? So I think what makes me different is that I think that people, I believe that the way that I do it is I get to know each of the individual. For example, if I'm most of the time I'm 
coaching hygienists. There'll be three or six hygienists. And I'm willing to take the time to get to know the hygienists each individually before we start working. I work for myself and not somebody else. So I really take a deep interest in my clients. I want to hear from each of the hygienists. I take a holistic approach. So after I meet all of the hygienists, I also work with the doctor. We have check-ins, me and the doctor. And not every doctor wants to be a leader. They just want to, a lot of them want to come to the office, drill and fill. But I have, I believe that I have a way to subliminally get to them to want to be the leader of their practice. And, and it sometimes takes time to help the doctor understand that the hygienist isn't on an island by themselves. It's the team approach that brings us with harmony and that togetherness to love what we do. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. You know, I know that there are a lot of dentists out there that really, you know, like you say, the drill and fill thing, they, that's kind of what they were taught to do in dental school, right? They learned the clinical aspect and, and it's really hard to, to learn, especially if you don't have a tendency to be business savvy to learn the business side of dentistry. Yes. It's someone, it does take someone like you to come in and help them see how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. Like you say, to help them work harmoniously together. So, um, you know, what I was thinking, Jacqueline, you know, I don't want dentists who are listening to this to think that I'm telling them they have all these things to do. My message to the doctor is as a leader, you need to know what to inspect. What do you expect? And we set up those expectations, what's expected while we're working together for the first, we take it in bite-sized pieces the first 90 days. And the doctor's role is to inspect. So I like to say that, you know, if I'm working with a big team, which I have, where we have six hygienists, four doctors, on and on, there's each like there's an assistant, the doctor knows who can they check in. There's a lead assistant. The doctor can ask that lead assistant at any point in time, a question about one of their systems in the height in the assistance departments and get an answer. There's a hygiene department leader. There's a front office leader and doctor's job is to inspect. What are, I help them come up with what they expect and then they're inspecting and I show them how to inspect and how to bring the team up. Each person on your team has some area that they can be a leader in. And we develop that, we create the leader in each of your employees. Well, I think that's awesome because it seems like it's so much better if you you know that you've got someone that you can trust who is taking a leadership role in their in their respective team, right? And then, like you say, the doctor inspects that everything's going well in each, diff, you know, in each of those areas. But yet, you still have to have someone to set those expectations, lay everything out, and um, then you can work together even stronger and become a stronger practice. Jacqueline, you just said something that cued me in to an important fact here. See, dentists go to school to be a clinician. And right. they don't understand, the majority of doctors do not understand when they buy the practice, which is usually the dream of that dental student, mm -hmm. they want to own their own practice, but they don't understand all these different areas. There's a book and it's called Get a Grip. I've always, a lot of my clients, we start out all reading that book and I highly recommend Get a Grip. In fact, I, I have it here in my office somewhere, but yeah. it's Gina Wickman. Simple okay. read, but it's you when you can let go that you have all these areas of the practice and you can develop leaders in these different areas. Now, doctors need to know they can trust. Here's the key point of that you said the word trust, Jacqueline. Yeah. Trust the process. Take a you know, take a br breathe on that. So, you know, take a, a deep breath and, and release some trust the process. When you can trust the process, you stop micromanaging. I think that's so true. And, and so you're teaching them those step-by-step -step processes so that they can become trusting 
to what you have taught them. That, I guess that's kind of what my next question is. You know, there's a lot of consultants who've been around for a long time and and like yourself, you probably have seen what works and what doesn't work in the dental practice. And so how do you get these providers with their teams to optimize their services and actually do what you're asking them to do? And it sounds like you you do make them leaders. You teach them how to become leaders. But then in turn, how do you get patients to want what they need? I guess it's kind of a step-by-step -step process, right? Exactly. You're trying to get the team on board to do what they need to be doing and what you're asking them to do. But in turn, you also need to teach them how they can get the patients to want what they need when it comes to oral care. That is great. So first step is when I'm meeting with the hygienist, we can talk for 10 minutes or sometimes we'll talk for an hour because it's my business. I'm not getting paid by the hour by somebody. I really care and I'll listen to those hygienists. So recently a hygienist, I met her. She was the first of several hygienists in the office and she flat out pulled me we're going to have laser. I'm not going to use laser. I think it's all a moneymaker. And when she started to, and I listened, but when she started to understand the why and the what it's going to do for the patients and that it's not about money, I have to tell you, she is the number one user of that soft tissue diode laser. I mean, we flipped that on its head of, she started out her first 10 minutes with me saying, I am not, and the doctor had already told me, she is the one person that will not do anything new. Oh my gosh, you know, they're using dental intel. She, I can log in and see, she's checking dental intel. She, oh, she just loves it. And that was her understanding what she needs to do and the why. And how does that benefit her patients? That's what it was all about. She wanted to make sure it didn't benefit because of money. And then it's the same thing with the patients. It's helping the patients to be a part of the process. So now I'm working with these hygienists and they're learning how to get the patients to be curious and part of the process and we spend a lot of time getting through that first half of the hygiene appointment, the data collection, what's involved in collecting all the important information and how do you create a partnership with your patient? Because when your patient in that first two minutes, the patient gets a feeling of trust from that hygienist. And then the hygienist lets the patient, it's all subliminal. There's a process that the hygienist creates with the patient. So they're part of the process. They feel curious by the time they're finished with all their collection of the data, the important factors of that hygiene appointment, what we're going to do, that patient is already wanting what they need because they were part of the process and it's a discovery process. And the patient didn't even know, we set them up. Yeah, for sure. No, I think that sounds like, that sounds like a really good plan. I know, you know, there are a lot of different types of dental practices, those that are all about revenue and others that are about helping others. But I feel like a thriving practice needs to do exactly what you just explained. Yeah. Is have a high care factor about the patient know the why and teach the patient why they need certain treatments or they what they need. Like you say, like you're digging in, trying to find all the facts and information. Yes. So that in the, on the back end, the practitioner can actually pay the bills, right? Yes. I mean, it, the bottom line, you know, why are we in business? I mean, why, you know, I have my why, why I do what I do. And it really, it's more than money. When you make it more than money, the people do come, they return. And so the money comes, but there's a, and that's one of the first things we work on. I talk with the doctor to find out why we're doing this. And everybody learns from the doc. I've had doctors start almost holding, though they were hold, she was holding back tears because nobody asked her why she's doing what she's doing and then get the team to, to you know, we all team up around that why. And that's why the patients come. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody wants to take care of their teeth, right? I mean, granted, you hear that people are scared of the dentist and they don't love sitting in the dental chair and all of those things. But when it's all said and done, we all want to keep our teeth for a very long time. So you need the dentist, you need the practitioner, you need the hygienist, and you need all of their buy-in for, for the patient to have trust that mm -hmm. they're taking care of you as a patient. I think that's awesome. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you came to my home and we had lunch. <laughs> and you introduced to me a new whitening product. And how does your new whitening product come into your whole hygiene background? And I, you've kind of been into whitening for a while because I remember Absolutely. you gave me whitening products at my previous job when we were friends and you just oh. would see these little whitening pans in the mail. And I remember thinking, how nice. And I remember loving it. Oh, okay. But once you told me about your new whitening product with the blue light, and it only takes 10 to 15 minutes, I want to hear a little bit more about your new whitening product that you just- If I can. So I want to explain what happened was in the economic decline that we had back in 08, and it happened for dental offices up until 2015. They, these dentists were calling me and they would say, they would say exactly this, Debbie, please take a look at the hemorrhage in my schedule. And so at that point in time, I also was asked by another teeth whitening company, would you like to promote our product? So I put those two together and now with COVID and the shutdown and supply situation, I really spent a lot of time thinking and researching how to create my own product, my own brand. And I came up with Celebrity Smiles Club. And there's a carrot, it's this whitening pen. And it, before we had syringes and trays, and you, so the dental office would have to take impressions, pour up models, make the tray, and the patient came back. Even if they were sitting in the chair for an hour and doing Zoom, to keep their teeth white, they needed this tray. So this is a pen that the dentist pays their $4.50 when they buy wholesale. They have to, they buy a hunt. Every office that buys these goes through some offices one to 200 a month because it's the carrot. When they keep their appointments, then they get the carrot. <laughs> Nice. These pens are on Amazon, all over the internet. It's a $6 billion business currently in North America. And only 17% of dental office patients get whitening from their office. Wow. So if you're a doctor or an office manager, or even a hygienist, listen to this. I mean, this becomes a huge profit center because number one, patients come in because they know they're getting this for free. They're going to, they are spending 20 to $25 for a pen and you give this to them for, you say, thank, you know, this is our thank you for keeping your appointment. They sign up for your club membership. Now I have offices that charge $99 to be in the club every year. They join the club and they get this free kit. It's a whole kit with a shade guide, a pen. And here's the light. So there's no more impressions. They leave with the light. Oh, wow. That was well, light. And I've actually upgraded it recently because my patients, as you mentioned, I'm still a clinician. Every once in a while, I do work as a hygienist. And patients who have gum disease usually come in saying, I want wider teeth. It's the funniest thing. But they, we give them this. And carbon peroxide is the main ingredient. Additionally, I've added potassium nitrate so that never have I had a patient have tooth sensitivity because potassium nitrate covers the dental tubules and this blue light whitens. But then after scaling and root cleaning, the main purpose of giving this, they're going to whiten their teeth when they have, and this helps heal the red light. And you can see, I have the, on my website, which I know you'll give everybody later, dental practice solutions, you go to the training vault, you can see everything. There's a learning center. And in that learning center are all the tools 
to enroll your patients, you know, research on why the red LED light helps to heal, soothe, yes. comfort. And my patients started telling me they were wearing the red and blue light, but the red LED light is what I've upgraded it to because they, my patients told me, I've never had gum inflammation, so I can't speak from experience, but they said the red light immediately comfort and soothed after scaling or replaning. Wow. I love that. Well, red light has become very popular in the cosmetic world right now. And, and even just for aches and pains and just to help with, you know, tightening your skin, there's a lot of red light um, information out there. So I think that's so cool that you've added that into your little mouth, your little mouth lightning um, tool, because I feel like that, like you say, that's, you're finding other benefits to bringing in the red light. Well, you sent me a kit and I tried yeah. it. And did I you try it? I did. I tried it and I loved it. I really loved it. I felt like usually when I whiten my teeth, I, I have the old forms, right? That I put in my mouth. The mouthpiece that they yeah, made and, for you. And they are, they can get very sensitive on my gums. Yes. Where this didn't bother my gums at all. It was only a 15 minute process. I just did the blue light for 15 minutes. And one of the things that I love that you told me to do was do it at night because you were like, because then if you do it after you brush and flush your teeth and then you whiten your teeth and then you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning and you have this most beautiful, brilliant white smile. And I could notice a huge difference just in doing it one time. So I'm really excited for this new product. Another thing that really impressed me was that you know exactly what is in this whitening product. I chose. I chose the ingredients. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you, you were telling me that there's a lot of ingredients, a lot of products out there that you don't really even know what are in them and what you're putting in your body. So I love that you chose that. I love that you created this. And I'm really excited about the opportunity that you have with the Celebrity Smiles Club. I'm really excited for you, Debbie. Yeah. I yeah. Go ahead. Is there anything else you want to talk about well, before we wrap up today? No, I wanted to just say, you know, I, I mean, one of the dental supply companies was going to carry the product. They were interested in it. Here's the thing. They were laughing about it because everybody has teeth whitening. Yeah. And I want you to know, remember, only 17% of your patients currently are getting their teeth whitened in some manner in your office. So what do you think is happening when you order your whitening syringes from your supply house well they've been sitting on the shelf for oh, a long they're time. getting old they're getting they out. are not selling so i keep mine in a ref they're kept refrigerated oh, yeah. which extends the life of the gel oh that's so that's i've chosen to not have i mean there are some ingredients you can we have an msds sheet that we give you if you're interested in knowing what's in it i can give that to you and you'll see there are some ingredients in there that I asked, you know, why do we even have to have this in there? And a lot of it's binders, but xylitol is in there. Menthol is in there, um, mainly carbamide peroxide, and then the potassium nitrate 6%. So I tried to keep it in that consistency with just some um, carbon carbomers that keep it binded together. But Think about that when you're ordering, how long has your whitening gel been sitting on a shelf somewhere? So right now we have orders coming in and I have a shipment coming in in the next week and then it'll go out to the dental offices constantly. It's coming in and going out. It's never it sitting so on a shelf. Good, it stays so fresh. And the whole idea is to get your patients using it so they want to come back for their hygiene appointment and get a new tooth whitening pen so that they yes very so light, right? it i mean offices do have whitening they offer but they're not selling it so it should this system which you can go to the website and see all i don't i you can see that there's an implementation guide you can see i show you you you're given marketing materials everything so it's constant every day every day you're going your patients are getting whitening they are going somewhere else and getting it they really are. It's a six. Tell me the website where you would go for the product itself. So on dentalpracticesolutions.com, when you go to the, on the top bar is 
different, you know, our blog, and then we have a training vault. And in the training vault, when you click on that, you'll scroll down, you'll see Celebrity Smiles Club, teeth whitening. It will help grow your practice. Perfect. I love it. If they were to Google Celebrity Smiles Club, do you think they would get to you? They will, but they'll get, we also have e-commerce. That's the e-commerce store. Oh, and, and I also have a different name for e-commerce. Oh, so God. I want the dentist to know that their patients can only come to them for the Celebrity Smiles brand. Nice. So Celebrity White is what we sell on e-commerce. And oh, by the way, you'll see Miss Colorado, the pageant is, I think it's April 8th in Colorado, Greenlee, okay. Colorado, and they're using our product as well as Miss Arizona and a lot of the ladies from Miss USA. Nice. That's that's wonderful. It sounds like your your business has taken off, your whitening project project or product has taken <laughs> off. And um, so how's the best way to get a hold of you? Just go to Debbie at dentalpracticesolutions.com. That's my email, Debbie okay. at, and then my business dental practice solutions, s at the end.com. And then our toll free number is 888-816-1511. I love it. Well, Debbie, I know that you can help these practices. You can help them bring patients back. You can help patients have a wider, brighter smile. And, and most of all, you can help the patients be, feel trust to their hygiene department and their practitioner because you can see that they're all working together in care of their own or their oral health, right? Absolutely. Yes. Well, it has been a treat to chat with you today. I'd love to keep this kind of short because we love this um, podcast to only be long enough for a little commute into the dental office. So thank you for joining us and we're excited to be here and we'll, um, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks.